Hey guys, how are you going? I thought I'd do another update on my Bell's Palsy. So we are now at week six. Um, you can probably see in my face that it's a fair bit different, but still not 100%. So um, at this point in time, we're looking at um, the fact that I don't have to put a patch on my eye anymore. Um, I can now close my eye straight away. I still can't fully scrunch my face up. So I don't know if you can tell on the video, but I can tell that this side is not strong here. And when I smile, it's still a bit uneven, um, but I can lift my eyebrows. The other thing I'm having though, which I think I mentioned on the last video, is that I've got this constant beeping in my ear. Um, and so we're at week six now, and that's still happening, and that's been happening for about two weeks, I think it is. And so, um, yeah, like I don't, I don't know when that goes away or when it starts to taper off or, uh, yeah, but I have heard from other people that in the recovery phase of Bell's palsy that this ringing can happen. And when it first started, it was almost like a heartbeat was just going boom, boom, and then it was this echoing sound that used to just go on and off, on and off, and now it's a constant beeping sound, almost like a truck's reverse beeper, um, but muffled you know, like a muffled, um, sort of dulled down reverse beep. <laughs> I can't really explain it, but that's how I explain it. So, um, so that can be quite draining, you know, because that's what I'm hearing all day. Um, and yeah, the other thing is obviously, you know, with the fact that my mouth and nose and those muscles are still not a hundred percent. Um, like if I pucker my lips, you can see it's still a bit crooked as well. So you can tell, tell this side of the face is still weaker, you know, than the other side. It's not 100%. So let's just say, you know, I'm sort of 80% recovered. Um, but yeah, it really has started to help me, you know, look at other health things in my life that are going on or that I've been, you know, pondering for a long time or or just re-evaluating re my health. Um, and I'm someone... Um, who is always trying to improve my health. I'm, I'm someone who's always trying to work on myself, you know, with personal development and mindset. Um, I'm someone who tries to eat really well, to exercise a lot um, or exercise, you know, enough, you know, sort of um, four times a week um, and move every day at least, you know. Um, and, but as we know, <clears throat> sorry, as we know, stress is you know, or stress on the body can be the biggest factor in everything. And so it doesn't matter how healthy you are. And this is something I've been, you know, talking to myself about because I guess I should go back a bit and sort of explain that, you know, when you're like, I'm someone who's in the health industry and I'm someone who is an advocate for health and wellness. I'm someone who's an advocate for mindset and for, um, you know, staying true to yourself and being an authentic person and, um, you know, the no bullshit type um, personality, you know, and, and just saying it how it is. And so when something like this happens, it made me question, well, am I really that much of a health advocate or am I just being fake in being this health advocate, you know? Um, but then I was like, no, 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 because I, I know a lot about health. You know, I study functional nutrition. Um, I've been in the health industry um, with nutrigenomics for the last six years, which is how nutrition and natural compounds affect, impact and activate our genes. So very genetic type um, learning and that sort of thing with, um, with health. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is the biggest factor though is, um, you know, the fact that over the last six years I've learned about stress and how to keep stress low, how to be a... Um, you know, a mum who's, you know, trying to ditch the stress on a daily basis. That's one of my big taglines. And and so when this something like this happens, it's like, oh, well, what did I do wrong? Because I'm trying to preach all this stuff and now here I am with this issue. And so I almost think it's like, I don't know what you want to believe or how you believe that, but I almost think that this sort of stuff shows up so that we have more tools in our tool belt to teach our people that we're advocating to. Does that make sense? And so um, so in this situation, it's not like I haven't been trying to, you know, um, help myself with stress or keep my stress levels low or, um, 
you know, I haven't gone off the rails in any sort of way with um, looking after myself. My self-care has always been really good. Um, I don't know if you'd call it selfish or self-care, but I like to say self-care, but I like to look after myself and, and have that time to do that away from my kids or, you know, my family. And, and um, I think that's really important, especially as a mum, because, you know, you're the cook, you're the cleaner, you're the, um, you know, the sower of the house, you're the school teacher of the house, you're the, you know, you're everything and you wear many hats as a mum. And so, um, I guess, you know, when something like this has happened, say with Bell's palsy, it's that smack in the face to go, we need to reevaluate something here because something wasn't right. And so when this first happened to me, um, I, I could tell something was wrong or that I was run down and I should have listened more. And this is where I'm going with all this health stuff. So I should have listened more because, um, I guess we can, <clears throat> I guess we can get stubborn. And so, um, I had massive pain in the back of my head the week before the Bell's palsy happened. And now I actually know that that is a sign that it's going to happen. Like people have said, yeah, mine happened with that. But I also had a lot of pain that came down to my ear, which you would have seen in the other videos. Um, and I thought I had an ear infection, which was pushing on the nerves or the tendons or something through the back of the head. Um, or just pressure and inflammation in the back of the head because of an ear infection. And so I was just dealing with it like it was an ear infection. I was still exercising, but not as hard. Um, but I was still going, you know, to my, to my gym or my exercise classes. Um, the other thing was though, I was staying up late. I was doing certain things in my life, um, that were keeping me up at night time longer than I usually would be. So, you know, and I've had adrenal fatigue in the past. And when you've had adrenal fatigue, you've got to be careful of when you go to bed because otherwise the adrenals kick back in and think that you need this second wind to keep going. And so you don't actually go to sleep. Or when you do, your cortisol's through the roof and you can't actually go into a deep sleep. And all of these sorts of things, hormone imbalances happen in the body when you've had adrenal fatigue or you go to bed too late and you're not listening to all of that. Um, and so that was playing a part in that same week that I had this, what I thought was an ear infection, but because I was getting up later in the morning, I was like, oh, it doesn't matter that I'm going to bed later because I'm getting up later in the morning. But, you know, I already knew that that was the wrong thing, especially with your adrenals. You need to be in bed before 10, 10 30, you know, around 10, 10 30 at the latest. And, and I was going to bed later than that. Um, and so what that does is it puts more stress on the body. It puts more, um, puts your nervous system um, and your immune system under load. So they are now in a stressful state. You're not in a homeostasis balanced state anymore. You're now in more of a stressful, highly anxious adrenal state. And so um, because that was happening, the ear, which I thought was an ear infection was happening. Yes, I was taking extra products to try and help myself like vitamin C, um, extra products that I've always taken. Um, I was adding in things like zinc and, you know, those things to boost or, or strengthen that immune system, but was still not listening to these signs of like, you know, maybe I should get this ear infection looked at, which wasn't an ear infection, or what is this pressure and pain in the back of my head? And, and so these are the things we don't know until they've, you know, happened. And then you're like, oh, that's why, you know, but, um, but now I know those signs and now I also know, you know, certain other things that I could have changed when I've reevaluated what happened the week before all of this, you know, Bell's palsy came about. Um, I can now use that as tools in my tool belt again to help other people. And, and that's where I look at the lessons that we are given or the challenges we're given become, you know, our biggest um, things that we can teach others or our you know, our biggest things we can educate on. And so, yeah, so it's just been a really good way for me to evaluate that. But not only that, but looking at, um, was I eating the right foods? You know, was I um, resting enough, you know, through the day? Or was I not um, exercising enough? You know, because I did back off because of my ear and those sorts of things. And so, yeah, it's just that evaluation and that resetting um, and really just tuning into myself. And I've always been very tuned into my own body and my, and that's why I could feel this pain. And some people say they don't even feel that, or they just think they've had a, 
you know, a bit of a dull headache or something. But, um, you know, all of those things, I knew that they were happening. And, and when you're in tune with your body, you can always tell when you need to rest more or when you need to reevaluate, reevaluate, you know, your food choices or your exercise choices or the mindset, you know, what's going into your head and those sorts of things. And so, um, so coming back around to all of that, I've then gone, right, what else is it that I can improve in my health and in my life now that this has happened? And so, um, you know, changing my hours with my workload, you know, for my business, I now, you know, I can, I haven't actually gone fully back into my business yet. And I don't want to at this point, because I'm still trying to reevaluate things and see where I want to sit with everything and not push myself again into this hardcore action mode, which could, you know, make this recovery last longer. I don't want it to be any longer than it is. Six weeks is long enough for me. Thank you. So, so it's like, yeah, I wanted to um, try and work out what else I can do in the meantime. So, and I have been doing more of the things like meditation and yoga and Pilates and those more gentle approaches to self-care. Um, and the, the things that do strengthen, you know, the immune system and, and strengthen the nervous system and help the nervous system. And as I've said to you guys, in one of my videos, probably three or four videos back, been learning about the vagus nerve and how important that is and why that's so attached to this Bell's palsy um, and triggering it that way. And and you can do vagus nerve meditations and yoga sessions. You know, you can do um, eat certain foods that really help the nervous system um, and obviously the immune system, as we know, they've got amazing foods that we know that really help that. But, you know, keeping that nervous system in a homeostasis state, which is a balanced, relaxed state, is so important in this day and age, you know, in these crazy times. And and if we get anxious or stressed or worried in any way, you know, the first thing that is triggered is that nervous system, you know, and all of our hormones that are run off that Um and if we're then not having the downtime to let that all relax again, you know, here we are with issues like this. And so it's been pretty cool to, to just reevaluate all of that and to bring that round and to check in on all of that. And so um, stay tuned for what else, you know, I might bring up or I might learn about that I can teach you guys about with all of this. Um, I don't think I'll need to dive more into the vagus nerve information. There is so much out there. And if you want to go and have a look, have a look at it. It's very incredible what your vagus nerve is all about and what it's for, what it does, its purpose. And I'm um, not going to go into that because this video has gone too long already. But then, you know, looking at your life right now, your health right now, reevaluating a few things. Can you change a few things in your diet or can you drop a few things in your diet or add a few? Um are you able to go to bed an extra half an hour earlier every day? Are you able to um, take downtime, which is true downtime, away from your phone, away from busy life, kids or household stuff? Um, and that could just be a walk along the beach, a half an hour walk on the beach, which is just by yourself. Or it could be, um, you know, half an hour of reading a book on your own with no interruptions or... Some people, it's just sitting and listening to nature, walking through a bush, you know, doing bushwalking or um, whatever that is. You know, it could be a, a yoga session. It could be anything that's gentle but self-care. So I've always thought as, as my gym, as my self-care, but you are smashing yourself for 40 minutes, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour. Um, and yes, that's like, I love doing that and I see that as a self-care sign, but but in time, but there, then there's no downtime, you know, as self care. I was like, oh, that I do that for forty minutes a day. That's my me time. But then there's no other me time. That was downtime, you know. Uh, and so, yeah, just 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 realizing that sort of stuff and going, oh, well, yeah, self care and me time, they are a little bit different, or I see them a little bit different now, you know. And and we do need to, you know, have that very complete, relaxed, you know, shut off state or space that we can give ourselves for even 15 minutes a day um, for the, the nervous system to be able to reset itself into a relaxed state and the immune system to know that it, everything's safe and okay um, and not be having to fight all the time in this, you know, stressed um, inflammatory response state, you know, sort of thing. I could talk about it forever, but it's just 
yeah, these are the things I've been evaluating um, as I'm going through this, you know, six weeks now, I'm still, um, I wouldn't say I'm frustrated. I probably, you know, have been very frustrated with, with the, the face stuff, but, um, but now I'm just like, right, how can I use this to my advantage to help people or just to help myself grow even more? You know, every day I feel like we need to be growing ourselves or at least doing something that is helping us, you know, to to um, be the best versions of ourselves. Like it's just, that's just, you know, that's a non-negotiable for me to try and always do that. It might not happen every day, but I try every day to at least put something in there that I know is is nurturing myself um, to be the best version of, version of myself. And so, yeah, so stay tuned. There might be more coming up. I am still reevaluating my health. I love, you know, they say you're pulling one onion layer off and then another one shows itself and there's something else to learn. And then you pull another onion layer off. You're peeling back those onion layers every time. And some people don't want to do that. They're like, no, nah, it's just too much hard work. They've got too much going on in their lives and and they don't see it as something where they want to fully help themselves um, to improve or, you know, to be a, a, the best version of them. They don't they don't know how to even step into that. But once you do and you start peeling these onion layers off, there is just so much more exciting stuff you can do. It's almost it's very addictive. I would, I would use that word very addictive to look to want to look after yourself, to want to keep improving yourself, to want to keep um you know nurturing and becoming that better version of you um and one other thing i've been doing with that is kundalini yoga breath work sound healing um so look all of that up if you haven't heard of or if you haven't done any of that i highly recommend it because that can help you in a um a quick way to peel back those onion layers without having to go through all the shit all the time just to get you know get the answers or to find what's next um but anyway thank you guys for always tuning into these videos or um, yeah, please share them with anyone that may, you know, other people that may be going through Bell's palsy that you know of that might um, get a response out of this or might need, you know, someone to chat to. And I'm always there for that sort of thing to help and support people. So, all right, guys, talk to you on the next video. Bye.